Let's talk about forgiveness. We've been praying powerful prayers from a book called The Power of the Praying Parent. It's so important to pray over our children daily. And this is a great book. You can find a lot of different topics to pray about in this book. It's also good to write your own prayers and to just pray from the heart. Allow the Holy Spirit to lead and guide you. But I want to talk about something that is so important for our kids and for us to walk lives that are free of unforgiveness, bitterness, and resentment. So let's focus on forgiveness today. How can we pray for our kids to walk in forgiveness and teach them unless we ourselves set the example by forgiving people who hurt us? Jesus said in Luke chapter 6, verses 27 and 28, Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. And pray for those who hurt you. And he practiced what he preached. Jesus is the ultimate example for us because when he went to the cross and he was dying on the cross for our sins so that we could be made right with God and walk in righteousness, the word says that we are the righteousness of God in Christ. And that's just right standing with God. So when they were slaughtering him on the cross, Jesus actually said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. So he was literally praying for them. He was doing exactly what he said in Luke chapter 6. Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you and pray for those who hurt you. So that's what we need to be doing. And that's what we need to do as followers of Christ, instilling that into our kids and teaching them how to walk in forgiveness and how to love people who hurt us. Because life is hard. We're living in the last days. We're living in a really dark time. And people will be lovers of themselves. They already are. And hurting people hurt people. So it's this habitual cycle. And somebody eventually has to break it. You can be that person. Whether it's been family or loved ones who have hurt you or uh, just people in general. It's so important to walk in forgiveness. Now, when you forgive other people for what they've done to you, that doesn't excuse their behavior. It really doesn't even affect them. It affects you and it affects your relationship with God. Because Jesus said, if you love me, you will obey my commands. And God said, Jesus tells us in the Bible that if we don't forgive other people their trespasses, then God will not forgive us our trespasses. So this is not just a suggestion. This is a requirement. Now, when I was growing up, I had a very difficult childhood. A lot of people hurt me throughout my life. So it took years for the Lord to work on my heart and to teach me and show me how to walk in forgiveness and how to love people who have hurt me. And sometimes it is a process, but you know, we don't forgive people because we feel like it. It's not a feeling. We're never going to feel like forgiving somebody for hurting us, but it's a decision. And once we decide, Lord, I'm going to obey your commands. I want to be in right standing with you. I want to have a pure heart. Show me, teach me, help me to forgive those who have hurt me because I don't know how. A lot of times over the years, we build up these walls of offense in our heart. And when we don't walk in forgiveness, it literally cultivates anger, bitterness, resentment, and it adds on layer after layer onto our heart. And it gets very difficult to break those walls down. Only Jesus can break through, but we have to give him permission and even seek him and ask him to work on us, to help us. And that takes humility. We need to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God because the word says God sets himself up against the proud. And it's just so nice when we have that purity and humility before the Lord and we know we're, we're walking in his ways, we're walking in his word, we're obeying, obeying his commands. 
it really gives us just that purity and that childlike heart. And God loves that. That's what he, he requires of us. So we need to not only learn how to forgive people, but also to forgive quickly and forgive new offenses. Can I tell you one of the keys that I have learned, one of the secrets to quick forgiveness is go to the secret place and start to pray sincerely for that person who hurt you. Lift them up by name. I mean, pray for them as if you were praying for yourself. And I'm telling you, it gets so much easier to just pull the layers of that darkness off, that hurt, that anger, that offense off of your heart. And you begin to really um, become compassionate and, and soft. And, you know, you really start to feel sorry for those people because then you have this understanding that something is wrong in their heart, something that, that they have been through, something that is hurting them. And then you begin to get this God-like or Christ-like compassion in your own heart. And suddenly the things that they did to you, the offenses, it's like you have this greater understanding and it's, it's so much easier to forgive and ex not excuse it, but just dismiss it to where you think about that person and you're no longer instantly angry when you think about them. And I think that that just shows spiritual growth and spiritual maturity. And that's how the Holy Spirit leads us and guides us. He begins to convict us and uh, to help us to, to walk in the faith, to grow in the faith. It's a line upon line, precept upon precept. You know, it's, it's step by step. God helps us to grow and to walk in obedience. And we become more and more loving and compassionate and understanding. And that's what this world truly needs. So I hope this message resonated with you today and that you just take it before the Lord and say, Father, reveal to me, Holy Spirit, reveal to me if there's anything impure in my heart, anything displeasing in your sight, help me to forgive those people and to walk in the love and forgiveness that you give to me. The Bible says, mercy will be shown to those who are merciful and God desires mercy over sacrifice. So he's a loving and kind father. And that doesn't mean that we need to be a doormat for other people. God does not like it when his children are abused or taken advantage of. But the Bible says, leave room for God's vengeance. Leave room for God's wrath. Don't take vengeance into your own hands. So when we do what God's telling us to do, we will be blessed because of our obedience and allow him to deal with those people and allow him to bring the correction, the, the vengeance, the um, whatever it is that he's going to do. Just, just let it go and leave it in God's hands because he will take care of it and people will pay for their sins. If there's no repentance, they'll pay for it. And it is a dreadful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. So really, I would be praying for those people who hurt you because if they don't forgive or if they don't repent and uh, get in right standing with God, they're going to fall into the hands of the living God and his wrath and his vengeance. And that is a terrifying place to be. So let's pray this prayer on forgiveness right now. And this is for our children. Living free of unforgiveness. Lord, I pray that you would enable my child, and you can name them right there specifically, to live in ongoing forgiveness. Teach him the depth of your forgiveness toward him so that he can be freely forgiving toward others. Help him to make the decision to forgive based on what you've asked us to do and not on what feels good at the moment. May he understand that forgiveness doesn't justify the other person's actions. Instead, it makes him free. Help him to understand that only you know 
the whole story about any of us. And that's why he doesn't have the right to judge. Lord, your word says, he who loves his brother abides in the light and there is no cause for stumbling in him. But he who hates his brother is in darkness and walks in darkness and does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. 1 John 2, 10 and 11. Show me places where I walk in the darkness of unforgiveness. I don't want that in my life. I want to see clearly and know where I am going. And I pray that for my child as well. May he always walk in the light of love and forgiveness. Enable him to forgive family members, friends, and all others as well. Teach him to release the past to you so that he can move into all that you have for him. Don't allow him to harbor resentment, bitterness, and anger, but rather help him to turn these feelings over to you immediately whenever they creep in. I pray that he will forgive himself for times of failure, and may he never blame you, Lord, for things that happen on this earth and in his life. According to your word, I pray that he will love his enemies, bless those who curse him, and do good to those who hate him, and pray for those who spitefully use and persecute him, so that he may enjoy all your blessings. Matthew chapter 5, verses 44 and 45. I pray that he will live in the fullness of your forgiveness for him and walk in the freedom of forgiveness in his own heart. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.